Hey gang, KR King here, helping one and all homebrew their own D&D campaign. In today's episode, I'm going to be talking to Fred Wheeler of the YouTube channel How to d and I've talked with Fred before. He's incredibly knowledgeable on being a GM, running D&D, and today he's going to talk about his kind of unique take on using cursed weapons in a campaign. Before I start, I want to talk about a site that I have discovered recently. I really like it. It's called Describe.com. You know, if you've ever thought about how am I going to describe the monsters or the scenes in my world, I'm not that skilled at it. These guys provide you with descriptions for everything. Uh, Monsters, places, treasure, magic items, spells. It's a really good resource. So I encourage you to look at this website, register under the free setting, uh, search through this, see what you like under the free setting. If you like what you've seen, they've got different subscription plans. They come up with different uh, descriptions every month. Choose one of the ones you like and then use D&D Homebrew as your coupon code and you'll get 10% off. Now, let's get going with Fred Wheeler of How to D&D. Uh, Today I'm talking with Fred Wheeler of How to D&D. Uh, And I had a previous conversation with Fred, and he mentioned to me that in his world, most of the magic items that he gives away are cursed. And I found this very fascinating. I thought about it later. I wanted to know more uh, because I had never thought of having this kind of strategy in my own game. Certainly, I've done cursed items. Uh, We used to have evil items that did damage and blah, blah, blah. But most of the magic items I would give away, I I just didn't think they should be cursed. So today we're going to talk to Fred. He's going to explain the philosophy of why he would uh, make most of the magic items cursed in some way in his world. But first of all, welcome, Fred. Thank you so much for, uh, for talking with me again today. You're welcome, Kevin. I'm going to enjoy talking about the topic. I know that a lot of people have wanted me to talk about cursed magic items before, and I have been very coy about discussing oh. that topic. Well, then this is quite a quite a moment here. Fred's going to spill the beans on this topic, which again, when I heard this, I thought to myself, I got to know why he's doing that. So let's start off, Fred. Uh, what is kind of, you know, is it true that you curse most of the items that you give away in your world? And what is the philosophy behind utilizing that kind of strategy? So first off, the homebrew magic items that I create that aren't in the Dungeon Master's Guide, yes, 90 to 95% of those magic items are cursed. Now, I didn't used to do that. So if I was running through Dungeons and Dragons um, Advanced 2E or 3.5 or 4, I wouldn't have done that. But with Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition, I have done that. And one of the reasons for doing it is there aren't enough cursed magic items in the game. If you look at the Dungeon Master's Guide for Dungeons and Dragons 5E, so that's the system that I'm talking about right now, there's about maybe two or three cursed magic items in there and all the rest, all they do is do good things for the players' characters, and there's nothing else else around them. That's it. So there's one of the reasons why I did it. There just isn't enough of them. All right, so so you've seen that there aren't as many, but how do you go from there aren't as many cursed items in the Dungeon Master Guide to 90 to 95%? Again, the ones that you homebrew. So are you giving out a certain, like a plus one sword or you know, plus one shield or something, those are, if they're out of the book, they're just normal type items? Or is it 90 to 95 of what you give away? No, 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 that's 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 different. Okay. So if I'm running a pre-made adventure, if I'm running a pre-made adventure, I don't usually take the magic items that are already there out of the adventure. If I put anything more into the adventure, I will put 95 to 90% magic items that I home brew are going to be cursed. That doesn't mean that I won't add additional magic items directly from the Dungeon Master's Guide unchanged. Um, it doesn't mean that I wouldn't pull them from the supplements, but the supplements don't have very many cursed magic items either. Most of those magic items, whether they're coming from an adventure um, or some other um, you know, 
book of everything, um, you know, Volo's Guide, those sorts of things. They don't have a lot of those sorts of things there. So Dungeon Master Guide doesn't have very many. The supplements don't have very many. So as a result, I've had to home brew and make a lot of them because there aren't that many to pick from. Um, and also, too, the tricky thing about Cursed Magic items, they need to be really specific to your story. It's no good just making an item and then just dumping some sort of effect on it and it doesn't have sort of any bear and bearing to it. Magic items should tell a story, right? So I'm going to be trying to figure out why this is going to be cursed, who cursed it, and what was their intention behind doing so? You know, was it just to just mess up the world or make somebody's life more difficult? There might be a different reason behind that. Well, and it's interesting because if you think about what it takes to make a magic item, this is another question about you know, the expense or the energy or whatever, I guess if you're 20th or 30th or whatever these people might be that are making these items, why did this person create an item uh, that is cursed? So who would be making them? And I was thinking, well, actually, you need to be looking at individuals who are, have a very life, a long lifespan, high level of skill. That probably means somebody who's immortal. That probably means gods. And it also probably means liches. Now, <laughs> what happens when you have liches making magic items? Liches' alternative um, reason for making magic items is probably not to create a whole lot of magic items that can be wielded by heroes who can run around the world and vanquish monsters and try to find a lich and destroy them. <laughs> the last thing that's going on. If anything, it will probably be to take control of the individual who is stupid enough to use that magic item and bring them into their fold. That means that as far as the worlds that I see in terms of who would be capable of doing that, there would be some good gods and some bad gods making magic items because they've got the time and the power. And then you've got a whole bunch of liches. They're not that many liches, but They've got plenty of time behind them, and let's just achieve the evil. <laughs> so. Would your players then begin to detect, or how can they tell? Okay, because if they say, I I haven't seen this in the book, or is this a homebrew thing? Uh-oh, Fred's giving me a cursed item. You know, do they become gun-shy? Do they become suspicious anytime they see something in your experience when you've played using this formula? Absolutely. Absolutely, it will happen. But they also still expect there to be gobs and gobs of magic items. They want to be able to craft them. They want to have plans so they can make more of them. So, so players in your world, they, you, they always seem to resent this? Or have you had groups where they, do you have a regular gaming group that they just accept this is Fred's world, no problem? Um, my, the, the people I play with, some of them get annoyed by it. And some of them have just grown to accept it. But they still probably get annoyed by it because there'll be some items that come along that they like. But I'm like, this is how it's going to be, and I'm not going to change this. If you guys don't like it, I understand, but it ain't going to change. And do you know what I've found that's interesting about homebrewing cursed magic items? When I think about all of the power gamers I've had at my tables, and I've got them in my home group as well, all the min maxes, all of the people who really expect lots of magic items. One of the things I've discovered is that cursed magic items tell better stories. They, they simply te deal, deal with things that players don't have to normally deal with. All the stories that I hear from my players that they retell are not from magic items found in the Dungeon Master's Guide. No, no. They have stories about the gauntlets of ogre power that transformed one of the characters into an ogre. Cursed magic items cause lots of drama in the story. And that's why I like cursed magic items in my stories. You think about Lord of the Rings, probably one of the most famous of all of the fantasy stories out there, and the ring, Frodo and the One Ring. The whole thing, it's a cursed magic item, and it tells the best story. But I do like that idea of the slow realization that, uh-oh, what's going on here? And then the being torn. Dungeon masters should feel like, you should, certainly you want them to get attached to it so that when they find out it is cursed, it's much more of a blow. Um, in my games, I generally allow them to use remove curse to get rid of the curse on them 
and then they can get disposed of it. You know, particularly if they're attuned to the magic item, and being attuned to the magic item means they, you know, that they are sort of fixed to it. You know, magic items that are cursed attach and sort of like parasites stay with you. Until my players um, in the group uh, who are playing characters decide, look, we've had enough. That magic item's causing too much trouble. Guess what? The cleric's casting remove curse on you because that magic item has got to go. And the best story is not necessarily that part of it, but the journey it takes to figure out how to destroy the thing because the last thing you want to do is just drop it on the ground and run away or try to sell it to somebody and wind up with them getting cursed. God knows what will happen if somebody else winds up taking possession of this thing, particularly if it's incredibly powerful and capable of, capable of getting more powerful over time. And that is one of the things I like to do with magic items is the longer they have the mag magic item, whether it be cursed or not cursed, they become more powerful because you've stayed with it. Um, so that's one of the things I like is the how do you destroy that cursed magic item. All right. Anything else you want to say uh, in terms of cursed items, uh, in terms of this? I, I've got a sense of your philosophy. I really like this, this, this homebrewed versus the modules. But any other things you want to say about cursed items? I would like to point out to those people who have not paid attention to the Dungeon Master's Guide is that there is a page on in the Dungeon Master's Guide for Dungeons & Dragons 5e that talks about rules around major and minor drawbacks that uh, can be included into your magic items. And I feel a lot of people ignore them. And I can understand why. The, the minor drawbacks or detrimental um, drawbacks are pretty lame. But the major ones, far more interesting. <laughs> they can tell a much better um, story than the, the minor ones. And I would suggest that people start looking at those. Uh, and yet, we really don't see um, discussions around cursed magic items because they are so unpopular by players. Uh, frankly, I do not expect a video on cursed magic items to do well on YouTube. <laughs> I think it would do really, really badly. Uh, the I see um, YouTubers constantly talking about, you know, if you don't want to have magic shops, then ask your players for their wish list. And I feel like the magic item wish list from players is a really bad idea because there are lists out there that talk about the absolute best magic items, 10 be best magic items you could have for your character class. These are really popular by players, and they will absolutely tear your um, campaign apart as a dungeon master. And I'm not really into making life more difficult because every time you add in magic items, and the only thing they do is good things, is you've got to change your monsters, encounters, you've got to change the very fabric. There's a certain point, and there's so many of them, that you can't change anything to fix the problem. So that's why I include mag uh, magic items that are cursed, so that my players do have trepidation about whether they will actually pick it up. And then once they find out it is cursed, maybe we need to get rid of it. Hopefully people will see that. As you say, it's interesting to think about cursed items are not popular, except perhaps among GMs that want to uh, uh, mix things up. I think cursed items, as you said, they stimulate storylines and uh, uh, there can be a quest in terms of uh, cursed items that you can do uh, that can really create not only a fun storyline, but one with urgency, right? Versus a good item, it is it is what it is, you know? Yeah, absolutely. All right, great. Well, thank you, Fred, for being on my channel, talking about why you, whenever you homebrew magic items, they're cursed. I understand this. Now I get the idea here. I really appreciate it. Sweet. No problem. All right. Thanks again, Fred Wheeler of How to D&D. Great discussion. Uh, if you like what you've seen, please comment. I love to hear them. I always answer my comments. Subscribe if you like my channel. Always looking for more. But most importantly, of course, keep playing D&D and tell somebody else about it.